Hello folks, I am Ed Overstreet and welcome to the Night Sky Imaging YouTube channel where today, uh, if all goes out, well, we're going to be working on uh, uh, the Seagull Nebula processing HA, S2, and O3 data that was taken in this, in this past January but not processed. And I think after looking at the data for a variety of reasons, but hopefully perhaps maybe we'll be able to get something uh, out of pretty much nothing so uh, let's give it a shot if nothing else you'll see my basic workflow that I use for narrowband processing so let's get started <laughs> Okay, folks, I have uh, opened up Pix Insight, and the first thing I'm going to do is go to Process, uh, Process Icons, and I'm going to load my Process Icons, and they should come up pretty quick. It remembers where I save them. I also make a backup, backup copy. I don't want to have to recreate these. So uh, we're rocking and rolling, and here they are. Uh, now, um, the first thing that I, I do, uh, particularly with this uh, data set that I took back in January, is I want to look at the data because uh, there's a reason why I didn't process it. I don't think I just forgot, but uh, I looked at the images I took in January, and I did a lot of imaging, so it's possible it got overlooked, but mm, kind of doubt it. So we're going to go to process, all processes, and head down to blink. And this is going to allow us to go through these images pretty quickly. I'm going to go down to the folder. And we're going to, it took me back to process icons. I need to go into Astro 4 Drive, 2022, January the 27th. See, I was taking a lot of data. I, I imaged with two telescopes at a time. And uh, so it's possible it just didn't get processed. Um, but here are my lights and flats, darks, and bias calibration frames. And so let's load all of these into Blink. Okay, they're finishing up. And... It will automatically do a non-destructive screen stretch on your first image, but we want to apply a screen stretch and look at all of them and deselect the ones that uh, uh, are rejects. So in order to apply this universal or global screen stretch, we're going to click on this first icon and it will stretch them all non-destructively. All right, we have uh, knocked that out, and so I'm going to uh, use this right arrow key underneath uh, this first image, and I'm going to quickly click through these to see if there's any uh, eyeball uh, rejects, and there probably will be. I saw right here some Starlink satellites and there was a uh, looks like an airplane don't delete those they get calibrated here don't delete those images they get that streak gets calibrated out There is not any O3 data, um, but I know what I did. I took a lot of 180 second images, and I probably blinked through them and saw that the data looked horrific, because there isn't any. And uh, I decided to uh, use them, but take some 300 seconds. So. 
I think that's probably, I don't remember, but I would guess knowing me like I know me, that's probably what I did. I never got around to taking enough 300 second S2 and O3 and HA to, uh, so we're in the 300 seconds now. I've already went over some images I know have some bad stars. We'll have to look at those a little closer. All right. So let's kind of zoom in on this and take a look at the stars and see as we blink through the second time, uh, deleting or deselecting those stars that are really out of round or just subject to terrible guiding. May stop and go back and look at some of them. Uh, these aren't good. All right, we want to deselect this one. Deselect this one. Here's that O3 data. Let's deselect this one. Let's go back. Let's deselect that one. Let's go back again. Uh, keep that one. Oh. Let's deselect that one. That one. That one. <laughs> that one. That one. That one's not good. I'm going to keep it. I'm running out of images. Delete. Ooh, terrible. Delete. Ooh. <laughs> I don't want to. Uh, we're on a roll. HA. Sorry, this is taking so long. Uh, okay, so we have quite a few uh, to get rid of. Uh, so I'm going to do is select them all. And I'm going to hold down my command key on a Mac. I think it's the option on a uh, Windows. And I'm going to just go through these unchecked ones. one okay I think that's oop, missed one there it's easy to do there should be a 
easier way to do this, but I don't know what it is. Now what I want to do is I want to take this icon at the very bottom. It's next to the scissors, to the left of the scissors, and I'm going to move those that I have selected, and we're going to create a new folder and call this Blink. For obvious reasons and we're going to open and these images are have been moved so I'm going to clear this out by clicking on the X at the bottom and let's uh, now open up the weighted batch processing script and you go to process I'm sorry, you go to script, batch processing, then you go down to the very last one. And let's reset everything. I'm going to reset all parameters. And I'm going to reset, uh, clear all file lists, so we'll start from scratch. And uh, let's head over to, I'm going to use files at the very bottom. And I'm going to use files to load everything. Well, here are our light frames, and we're not using these. We, we uh, deselected those. We want to go to our blink folder where we moved the good ones and select them all, and we're going to load them. And so let's go to lights, and here they are. And so now we're going to go back down to files and we're going to load our calibration files. So let's just start with bias and we'll load 50 of those. We don't need more than 50. And there they are in the bias folder. So we'll go down to files and PixInsight knows where to put them. And we're going to do our darks and so we have 180 second darks and we have 300 second darks. So we need all of these. We have 20 each. That should work. And then click on files and we'll load our HA, S2, and O3 flats. And do we have them? HA, O3, and S2. Oh, my goodness. Well, I can tell you another reason why I probably uh, didn't process this data. Now, these are uh, five tenths of a second. And uh, my HA, my narrow band flats are always two seconds to 15 seconds. Uh, I am pretty sure these flats are going to fall flat on their face. Let's load them. The, the lights, the subs aren't that great anyway. <laughs> I think I know why I didn't process this. It would be a waste of time. So, we got bias. We have 80, 180 darks and 300 darks. We have five second flats for all of them. Something happened. Because something had to have happened. That's insane. HA are, are a little longer always. And wow. Okay. This may be one total messed up video. Um, well, let's see if we can make a silk's ear out of a, or a cow's, wait a minute, a silk purse out of a um, cow's ear or pig's ear. Um, let's go over to calibration. Actually, let's go to post calibration, see what we've got. We have three frames of S2 at 300 seconds. We have 21 frames of HA at 
300 seconds. So an hour and 45 minutes of HA. Uh, at 180 seconds, we have 38 frames of S2 for almost two hours. We have an hour and 45 minutes of O3 at 180 seconds, but there was no data. Uh, once it's stacked, there might be some, but uh, and we have 48 uh, total frames in HA at 180 for two and a half hours. So we have a total of eight hours and three minutes on this, and I don't think it's going to be worth the tiddly, tiddly. All right, so the first thing we need to do, though, is to back up to calibration, and uh, I want to click on 48, and I want to go up and change literal to automatic, and I want to apply to all frames. I, did, I do have a cosmetic correction script up here. Uh, and so I'm going to load that template. It's called CC. It's it's up here. I'll show you in a minute. And so I want to apply to all frames. So it has. It has applied uh, cosmetic correction to all the frames. And um, it, this is not a one-shot color camera. So we do not check color filter array images uh, either here or in the flats. So um, we do need to uh, find or create an output folder. So I'm going to click on to the box and uh, 27th. Let's just go to the root and call this one dash fix. So we have a folder for output. Uh, we're going to uncheck keyword keyword grouping. Okay, let's go to flats. Uh, we're not going to select color filter array and scaling. We don't need to have optimized master dark because we have matching darks for our matching uh, subs. And so we look good there. So now let's head over to our lights. Uh, everything's going to stay at the default and we're not going to check interactive. We do want to create a folder of drizzled images and that will be in the registration folder. Uh, flats, nothing changes. Default settings are in place. Darks, nothing changes. The default settings are in place. Um, you don't have to have a 10. You, you don't have to ch change your exposure tolerance, but you could put zero there because we have 300 second darks for our 300 second um, subs, and we also have 180 second. This is when you have a set of darks that you want to use for all of your subs, but your subs have different exposures, but you only have one set of darks. And the difference in the exposure needs to be the diff it needs to be entered here. For example, if you took a hundred and eighty second uh, image image uh, subs at one hundred and eighty seconds. And you also took some subs at 150 seconds, but you only took 180 second darks. Then you could change this to 30. And then over here, 30. And then over here under lights, I mean under uh, calibration data, you would uh, select frames and you would optimize your master dark. So, but that's not the case. So we'll go back to our uh, darks and we don't need anything there. Zero works fine. <clears throat> so if you click on diagnostic, it tells us that we're going to need 
a total of 36 gigabytes on our drive and we have uh, plenty so that's going to work uh, let's look at our calibration data one more time uh, you can see the uh, calibration diagram <coughs> The uh, flats that we took will have the master bias removed by subtracting it. That will give us, give us our calibrated flat. Then down here, you're going to have your light uh, frame. And the dark current is going to be subtracted from that. And then the uh, master flat, which has already had the bias removed, is going to be divided into that product. And uh, that will leave you with your calibrated light frame. And that's what Tix Insight is about to do. So let's let it run. Uh, over here, I check everything but smart naming override. I do want registration reference image. Uh, I want to set that to auto and let uh, Tix Insight figure that out. One other thing over here. Um, Everything looks, everything looks good. So let's go ahead and run and click OK. So it's going to start running and calibrating and doing its thing. I'll come back when we're finished. OK, we are done. And I just lost my weighted batch processing script. Um, there it is. All right, we have finished processing everything. I actually didn't need it, so let's close it out. Um, and now it's time to look at our masters. So I'm going to open. And uh, let's... I know these flats are going to be ridiculous. I don't even, let's go to picks. Let's look at masters. <coughs> and... Um, these are our reference frames using the local normalization um, uh, process and uh, which we had selected in our lights. So uh, we won't be using those. We're going to open up our HA uh, that are 180 seconds and our, all the way through our S3, which are 300 seconds. So let's open them up. <coughs> And we're going to delete these rejection frames, high, low. And let's get out our screen transfer function and stretch this. And this is a S2 at 300 seconds. We only took three of those. Surprised we have anything at all. So I'm going to put S2 and uh, underscore 300. And I'm going to tuck that away right here and now we're looking at HA at 300 seconds high low rejection and this is our okay so we have our HA at 300 this will help me remember and then we have our 180 second S2 this is our rejection high, let's get rid of that. Rejection low, let's get rid of that. <coughs> and we have a little data there in S2 at 180 seconds. So we'll tuck that away here. And uh, this is our O3. There wasn't any high, low, and eh, some faint O3 signal that was captured. So this is um, O3 at uh, 180 seconds. Let's move our 300 seconds over here. 
and this is our HA at 180 seconds. And we'll open that up. Not too bad. And so this will be HA. Oops. And 180 seconds. So. So this is what we have so far. And let's see what we got. <clears throat> um, the first thing I'm going to do is combine the 300 seconds with the 180 second. I'm not going to process them separately. I'm just going to go ahead and combine them now in Pix Insight. So I'm going to bring up uh, Pixel Math. And you can find that in processes, all process, and go down to pixel math. Right there. I keep a icon on my desktop. And we're going to go to the expression editor. Let me stop there. We're going to make sure that we're going to use a single expression. And we're going to the expression error, and we want to add HA180. And I'll hit a plus sign to HA300, which we did. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to open up my HA300, no, my HA180. Doesn't matter, either one. And then I'm going to open this box, and I'm going to replace the target image. So I'm going to replace this one with... Uh, the uh, combination of the 180 second signal with the 300 and that's all you do. I'm going to drag and drop it and so there's our new restretch it. There's our new HA and I'm just going to call this HA and it has signal from both the 300 second and the 180 second. So we're going to do the same thing here. We'll get rid of that. And we're going to go to Expression Error, Expression Editor, and we're going to take our S2180 plus S2300. Okay. We're going to replace the target. So let's get our, uh, that's fine. Let's get our triangle and drop it. Restretch it. And there's our S2 signal. And we're just going to call this S2. We didn't have much to work with. There were only uh, two or three um, 300 second S2 images anyway, as I recall. And then we're going to go ahead and change the name of this to O3, as we did not have any 300 second O3 to add. All right. So let's combine those. Let's open up uh, LRGB. You can use either this or RGB combine. They're under process, all processes. And go down to channel combination. And so let's reset it. And we're going to drop our HA into the green channel. And our S2 into the O channel. I mean into the red channel. S2 and our O3 into the blue channel. This is the this is the uh, show palette SHO, where RGB is mapped to sulfur goes to red and hydrogen alpha goes to green and O3 goes to blue. So we're going to click on global. We're going to make sure that we have unchecked the ch the channels up here. And we're going to probably get either a blue or a green image. Because it was mostly hydrogen al alpha signal. And let's stretch it. As expected, we have a green image. All right, we're going to call this SHO. And we'll make a copy. And I'm going to save the original here. And the next thing I want to do to this image is do a crop. 
and we're going to rotate it. So let's bring up dynamic crop. You can find that in process, all processes, and head down to dynamic crop. And what I'm going to do here is reset it and then take this side over here and bring it in a little. Bring this side in and bring it in a little. We have stacking problems. And let's bring this in a little more because they're mostly over here and up here. All right. Might just err on the side of caution. And I hate getting rid of those pixels. Maybe come in just a little bit more. All right. I'm going to save this crop, so I'm going to drop this here and put it by crop. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and execute it. All right. Then I'm going to click on fast rotation. And fast rotation can be found under process geometry. And it's here, or you can go to all processes. You can go down to fast rotation. And we want to go counterclockwise 90 degrees. So let's do that. All right, that's what we have to work with. Now, I really don't see where the flats did much damage. I'm looking at potential gradients and I really don't see uh, a lot of gradients. But let's go ahead and let's take uh, our background dynamic extraction and let's open that up. And I'm going to open up one that I've already created called edges. I got this from Sean Nielsen. I'm going to delete this one. Uh, actually, I'm going to put it, move it over here. And I'll put another one there. Put one here. That's pretty much it. And I want to save this over here by DBE Edges. And so let's execute it. Now, this just ran the uh, dynamic processing uh, background extraction uh, using division. We want to now use uh, subtraction, but we're going to have to close it out and reopen it. So I'm going to click on this, and it's going to put the same boxes back. And this time we're going to use subtraction. And this uh, subtraction uh, helps for uh, issues you have in your corners and uh, due to the vignetting, but I really didn't see an issue with this. Uh, Let's go ahead and move those up to the edges. Should have done this last time, so I'm going to run it again using division. And I'm going to delete this icon and I'm going to create a new one for edges. And so let's run this. And we're going to open it up again. And we're going to run division now again. Okay. All right, uh, 
do 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 let's check our noise we have some but it is not as bad as one would think but i'm going to use the noise exterminator and uh, this is a linear image I want to come down to about 75, uh, maybe 70. Don't need a lot. And uh, I'm going to leave the detail. I don't think it drop it to about 10. And so let's apply that. You can use the default, but it will really, it comes close to looking plastic like. If you uh, smooth it out too much, it's all a matter of preference. What do you like? All right, and we can zoom in, and it does manage noise. I think we've got some decent detail. We'll work on that also, and I think our uh, background. I possibly would undo this and run it again and drop it to 60, but uh, we're going to, in the name of just getting this workflow understood, uh, continue on. So, uh, what I want to do now is I want to extract a um, luminance layer, and I'm going to go up here. I want to do this in the linear mode and I want to call this loom and I'm going to bring that over here and I'm going to retitle this crop db edges uh, underscore um, noise exterminator. So I'm going to make a clone. I'm going to bring this over here and we're going to work on the clone. And so, decisions, decisions. Um, if I feel the need to deconvolve my stars, I will be using uh, this loom layer. And I may not, though. Okay, my stars are very pixelated when you zoom in. I should have drizzled this, uh, or nearly I do, but the processes take twice as long to run, which is not healthy for these videos that uh, I do on YouTube. So had I decided to drizzle, the way you do that is I go up to drizzle integration, I open my process icon, and you can find that under process, all processes, uh, drizzle integration. And I add my files. I'll show you where they're stored. Go to your fix, registered, and then start with HA. You have to do one separate. And it says XDRZ, meaning that's drizzled. And you open up your drizzled files. And... Uh, scale to 2, drops shrink 90, don't change anything else. If this was a one-shot color camera, you would uh, enable color filter array drizzle. You don't need a point of interest. All you do is drag it, drop it, or click global, and it will create a new HA at 180 seconds that uh, will have twice the information as you see here. 
the stars won't be nearly as pixelated when you zoom in. But uh, in the name of time, we're not going to do that. So I'm ready to stretch this image and take it from linear to nonlinear. And uh, so one way to do that is to go up to, let's make another clone. Um, we'll minimize this one. Actually, let's go ahead and name it. We're going to call this one Instagram Transformation. And we're going to call this Easy Stretch. And we're going to go up here to Script. And we're going to go down to Easy Processing Suite and Easy Soft Stretch. And we're going to bring up this. And this is what our image will look like after it's stretched. I'm not going to change anything here. We're just going to go run easy, soft stretch. And the image is now stretched. It is a nonlinear image. So let's set this over here and let's bring up the... Um, Let's get it out of the way. And there's a couple ways we can do this. Let's just use both ways. I'll minimize this one too. Let's start with, uh, we'll, uh, we're going to uncheck. So we do not have a stretched image. I'm going to open up a uh, histogram transformation which is right here you can find it under process all process uh, histogram transformation I am going to find this file and it's the one that says histogram trans and so we want a preview window and we're going to start stretching. I'm going to reset it. And I'm just going to move this slider over. And click OK. Reset. I'm going to move it over again. Click Apply. And reset. I'm going to move it the dark over to right where it starts to go up. I don't want to clip any of my dark signal, and I'm going to bring this over, uh, let's say there, and I'm going to apply, and I'm going to drag this back, and let's do where those two come up, that's about where I was, so it wouldn't make any change, so uh, we can go ahead and apply this, and it didn't, so we're good to go. We're going to we're going to um, call this um, identifier histogram stretch under cancel and do it again. Identifier histogram stretch manual. And we're going to put that over here. We're going to open up this histogram stretch automatic, I'm going to call it. But we're going to unstretch it. We're going to find this file. It's right here. And uh, we're going to stretch it. And then we're going to take this icon down here and drop it. Bingo. And then uh, we're going to unstretch it again. And I'm just going to take this triangle and drop it on 
my disk and I my picture and it's now stretched so either way um, here is um, the three methods and you can see the easy stretch and my manual stretch are pretty much the same the automatic stretch did pull out a little more blue in the stretch and I think I'm gonna go with that one uh, normally I use my manual I could have pulled out some more blue uh, playing around with it but we're going to call this now linear nonlinear and we're going to drop it to the side and we're going to put this nonlinear over here okay so what we want to do now is try to control some of the I think I want to remove the strong green signal in here um, I don't want to remove all of the green but I'm going to bring up the SCNR SCNR it's already on green and I'm going to bring this down to about say 90 I want to preserve my lightness and so let's get rid of the green and uh, that looks okay let's close that out all right uh, let's make another loom I'm gonna call this nonlinear SC in R uh, minus 90 green and make a clone I'm gonna save this whole uh, all of these steps, everything I've done as a project. In fact, let's go ahead and save that now in case I had a crash. I could always come back to right here. And the way I do that is I'm going to go up to File, Save Project, and I'm going to call it, let's see, uh, just call it Seagull Nebula. And I'm going to find the root directory for this file, which is right here. And I'm going to save it here and click OK. OK, now um, I've saved the project. And if I ever, uh, if I leave this now and uh, want to come back, I can always go to File, uh, Load Project. And there's the Seagull Nebula. And I open and it will bring everything back up that's been done so far. So what you see is what you saved. All right, now <clears throat> I want to affect some of the uh, uh, saturation, and, and I want to increase it correctly. Uh, I don't want to push it into colors that it's not. I want to just kind of push the colors that I have in the in a um, more saturated, deeper, richer uh, look before I apply any curves. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to remove the stars from it to start out with because I really don't want the stars to be affected by this saturation uh, technique. And I picked this up from somebody online. Um, I, I changed it some, but the, the theory behind it I got from him I wish I knew who it was so I could give him credit, but uh, I just can't remember where I saw it. Uh, and at the time, I didn't think I would ever forget. So I'm going to go to uh, Star Exterminator, which is what I'm going to be using. And this, of course, is nonlinear, so I don't need to check that. Um, I am going to go ahead and generate a star image as well as a starless image. 
and I do want to check unscreen the stars. I know I have the right AI uh, selected, so let's go ahead and remove the stars. Some of you might have Starnet uh, or Starnet 2, and that works exceptionally well as well. Uh, I have it. I just have preferred, uh, since Star Exterminator has come out, I prefer that uh, much more. Okay, we have our results, and this is our nebula, and this is our uh, star field. So I'm going to call this stars, and I'm going to call this starless. And uh, we're going to uh, work on starless for the time being. And uh, Okay, now I want to extract a luminance layer from this. And so I'm going to go up to up here at the top where uh, I hope you can see this. I realize my icons, some of them don't show up at the streaming. But I want to, at the very top, there's uh, some icons. And uh, I want to extract the uh, luminance layer from this. So here we got it. And I'm going to uh, call this Loom uh, Mask. And I'm going to set this over here. Now, this is the magic. I'm going to go over to LRGB. And... I'm going to reset everything. I'm going to dro drop Loom Mask into this uh, layer. I'm going to uncheck RGB. And I'm going to drop the saturation down to about 350. I don't check uh, chrominance noise reduction. And I'm going to drag and drop. Probably do this another time, two, maybe three times. Okay, that brought out some nice blue, and uh, so let's do it one more time. Well, I'll show you before and after. Before, after, before, after. So let's try it again. Okay, and so before, way before, and then first application, second application. So I'm going to stop there. I got some nice color coming out. All right, and so I'm going to make a copy of this. And uh, I'm going to drop this here under Starless. And I'm going to call this Seagull. You can call them anything you want. This just helps me to stay on track. And I'm going to bring up my stars. And... I don't have many magenta looking, but I'm going to go ahead and remove uh, magenta stars by picking the process. It's a process, all processes. <coughs> uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Ah, it's a script. Go to script. Uh, is it utilities where we have... Nope, it must be render. Uh, nope. Uh, where is remove magenta stars? Well, 
but I will find it for you here. I think. I know it's not a process, it is a script. Well, I'll find it in. Uh, let's see if it tells me. Nope. What have I overlooked here? Got another. Uh, it's got another name. Uh, that's what's messing me up here. I call it remove magenta stars, but it's got. You're probably watching this and know exactly where it is, and it's like screaming at me. Well. Driving me nuts now. Ah, correct, Magenta Stars. All right, there it is under Utilities. So click on that and you'll get this Collect Magenta Stars. So that's what you want. I'm going to drag and drop. Ay, 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 ay. <coughs> Sorry for that long wait. And uh, yes. All right. So we have our stars and we want to add them back. So let's go over to um, Pixel Math. And we're going to add uh, or take our expression editor. And we're going to take Seagull. We can find Seagull here. And we're just going to add back stars and click OK. Uh, let's create a new image. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, we want the color space to be RGB. And just drag it here. And so we have our new image. We can go ahead and put Seagull away. And we can put our stars away. And we're going to call this Seagull 2. Okay, <clears throat> now let's um, let's get rid of some of these stars. So uh, one way to do that is uh, a good way is to uh, use Bill Blanchon's star reduction method and uh, that's what I plan to do so I'm going to bring up the version 2 if you don't have these in my prior video I show you how you get those and uh, you need a starless version which I already have and so uh, what I'm going to do is just drop this on my image all right I'm going to run one more iteration of it and this time I'm going to have soft reductions and in fact I may run two iterations of it <coughs> And so let's drag and drop. All right. 
looks pretty good. Um, it not only reduces the size of your stars, but uh, it eliminated a number of the stars. Um, his version one uh, left at the default will really knock out some stars, as you can see there. So I like that. Let's go ahead and, uh, yes, it has done a pretty daggone good job of reducing the size and the number of stars. Awesome. All right, <clears throat> now I'm going to bring up curves. I'm going to make a copy not a copy, a preview, and uh, I'm going to use the RGB slash K. I'm going to make a slight S-curve for contrast. I'm going to darken the darks and kind of brighten the midtones a little and the brights a little, not that much. And so let's give it a application. And we could probably give it just another one, but I'm not. That's why did I get rid of that? I want curves again. Let's bring curves back. Curves can also be found in process, all process. Um, it's called curves transformation. So let's create a real time preview. Now let's go over here to the far right. Let's reset everything. Let's go to saturation. And let's just grab it right at the mentones. And let's just bring it up. Some, not a lot. And let's apply that. See, I still have some green in there. And I like that. It's all about taste. All right, guys, I think um, normally I would apply more noise reduction, but the first application was enough. So uh, I think what I'm going to do is bring my stars, uh, my uh, starless version back, and I'm going to use that as a mask. And so everything you see in red is going to be protected. And everything else you see is going to be affected by this change. So I'm going to go up to mask and I'm going to unshow the mask. Because I don't really need to see it. And what I'm going to do is come over here to uh, Ed's um, MMT sharpening. I thought I named it Ed's. And these are the settings. Uh, I'm going to do a real-time preview. And so this is what I got. I like it. So let's apply it. This is the multi-scale medium transform. It can also be found under processes. All processes, multi-scale, median, transform. And then you just set each of these uh, by clicking on it and then adjusting the bias. Uh, that's 100. That's 100. This, is, this layer is 50. And I just have uh, four layers that I am um, working with. So, folks, I'm going to kind of leave it at there. I think this is... Um, pretty much done for me. Um, I don't know what else I could have done. I think I ran the star reduction method too many times and my stars have gotten uh, some un unnatural looking to them. So you got to be careful with star reduction. Um, it's probably best only to have a one run and have the iterations set at the at that time. But um, at any rate, um, I'm really kind of surprised that I had um, a field that was as decent as it turned out to be. 
because there's enough data in there to make an okay image. Not great, I agree with you, okay. So with that being said, uh, clear skies to everybody. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification button so you'll know when I'm uh, doing this again. And um, I hope to be doing these, I hope to be going live. I'm about ready to move all of my equipment when I brought, what I brought it all in during the summer. And uh, uh, we have rain every day and it's pointless to even try to image. Uh, but I brought everything in and uh, took everything apart, re-greased uh, uh, my, my, my worm, my worm gears and, and, and uh, I replaced some uh, bearings in a, an AVX mount. So my Atlas Pros are ready to go, I hope, and uh, so is my AVX. But uh, it's about time to go set them up and pray for some clear skies. And I sure hope you guys get some uh, clear skies. But with that being said, clear skies and catch you later.